We all have a story to tell, and your story matters. Now more than ever, that's why we've created Cine Youth Fest. A cinema festival and a platform for independent voices, positive change, stories of heroism from the lens of a Latinx experience. Join the adventure on our website, cineyouthfest.org. There, you will find all you need to participate in the competition. The rules of the game, Latinx and film, where you find out how important we really are. Classes behind the camera with people who know. Stories from others like you who have a dream, big ideas, and awesome goals. Raise your voice to be heard. Show off to be seen. And be part of history sharing your story. Lights, camera, acción. Because tú cuentas. Powered by H I T N. Hey, I've been my I've been muted this whole time. Did we all love that? We love that. We love that. And you know what? I'm just gonna repeat everything I just said, but like the Cliff Notes version. You know what? The best way to describe that is it feels like I've lost my mind and you all got to witness it. Okay, amazing. Guys, thank you so much for coming to the sixth installment of Conversations Among X. Honestly, this is great because I did some jokes that I didn't love, and so this is a good way. I just workshopped it alone. Uh, Conversations Among X is a series of panels that highlight the talents and experiences of Latinx creatives across the U.S. That sound is my dog uh, squeezing a toy. This is going seamlessly. I love the internet. Now, Conversations Among X is a part of the Cine Youth Fest, which is an online film festival, and they make events, right? We, and they're specifically powered by HITN, which is the Hispanic Information Telecommunications Network. What? You don't... You never heard of them? Well, guys, they're the largest non-commercial Spanish language television network in the U.S. Oh my gosh, the accolades, they just, they just don't stop. So who am I? Who am I? Who is this lunatic that was muted and now not muted and now has a job, right? My name is Lorena Rusi. Uh, you know, I, you're gonna be hearing more about me. You don't need to know, but I'm gonna be moderating today's panel because we have, it's just such a wonderful panel. It's all about film festivals and Latinx filmmakers how to submit a winning entry. You know, because I've submitted a lot of duds and I would like to win something for once in my life. What? Okay. Now, you hated hearing me speak and that's fair enough, but we have four wonderful panelists who are going to shed some light and give us all some gems, some information that we all just needed here. Is that okay? It's gonna have to be because I can't see you. So some housekeeping before I introduce you to them. Uh, this is live, this is very live, this is the internet, as you all saw. I was muted for 40 hours before I even started. If there's any technical difficulties, any glitches, just like a little bit of paciencia, as my mom likes to say, okay, paciencia, por favor. Okay, look at that, ah, what is reality? I need to call my mom. Okay, we're gonna start off the show with my bio package, because frankly, I just, we need to get it out of the way. You've gotta trust me a little bit, to, you gotta know who I am, just so that we can get this ship up and running. Um, so here is my bio package up first. My name is Lorena. I am a full-time comedian and filmmaker. I am Latina and I'm queer. I'm a, a lady, you know, right at the edge, but I'm a, I'm a woman. 
That's Tova. What? I used to play soccer professionally because uh, stereotypes come in one size. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, hello? Yes, that was about me. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, now that you know who I am, let's move on to the guests, which is really why we're all here. And our first uh, guest panelist is Carla Cabina, who frankly, truly feels like my twin from another alternate universe. Is that too much to say? I don't know. But here is Carla Cabina's uh, bio pack. Carla Cabina is a queer, multidisciplinary artist born in the archipelago of Puerto Rico, where she lives and studied visual arts. She developed a passion for art, science, and archaeology at an early age, thanks to the books and magazines her grandmother kept at the basement. Throughout her career, she has used photography, performance, and film to deconstruct gender and ancestral mythology. The love for symbolic language saved her from academic failure and guided her path. In university, she found photography and theater, and once she graduated, immersed herself in community work and in the creative experience of working with others. The vocation for cinema emerged from all these influences and from the audiovisual possibilities of its language. As a self-taught filmmaker, she made various short films, social films, and in 2016 released her first feature film, Extraterrestrials, which she wrote, directed, and edited. The film has been exhibited in more than 40 queer film festivals around the world and has collected awards in Puerto Rico, Miami, Milan, and Paris. During 2020 on the confinement due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Carla was part of the Quarantined Eyes Photographic Challenge on Instagram. Carla is also an accomplished and celebrated poet. I mean, I mean, Carla, buddy, I felt bad about myself before, and then I saw this bio package. <laughs> you're, you're on mute, by the way. You're just saying hi, okay, yeah, yeah, you're, you're muted if you wanna say hello to the people. Oh boy, oh boy. It, it, the story repeats. Uh, I really <laughs> like the bio. <laughs> yeah. I was just kind of, you know, nervous. I have to say my, my primary language is Spanish, so if you hear my English is kind of uh, rusty, sorry mm -hmm. for that. Oh my gosh, Carla, no, perfecto. Ahí hablamos en español y inglés. We'll all Duolingo, we'll translate for everyone. Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, Carla, thank you so much. Uh, I'm now going to introduce the next panelist. Guys, can you believe we have more panelists? Um, this next panelist is, is, I already have the giggles, um, is Adrian Nuno. I think I'm saying this correctly. Um, he comes in, in, a, in a package, but I, will, I won't spoil it for you guys, okay? If you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. But this is Adrian's uh, bio video package. Adrián Nuño is a filmmaker, editor, actor, and content creator from Chicago, Illinois. With over 10 years of filmmaking experience, his work shines a light on underrepresented topics and communities. He co-directed, produced, and edited a short film on mental health entitled Little Things, which received recognition from film festivals in Portugal, Ireland, and here in the United States. His most recent project is a Latinx web series entitled Bordered, which will premiere its first season this year on the Emmy-nominated platform, Open Television. Adrian is one half of the famous Nuno Twins. The award-winning duo have created more than 200 videos ranging from advertisements for entrepreneurs to content for nonprofits. The Nuno connection is unreal. The magic goes far beyond the regular twin connection. While his brother Andrew masters storytelling, Adrian masters the art of putting them together. together. I mean, Adrian, hello. Thank you. Hello. For being here. <laughs> I mean, truly, what, all these bio packages every single time, I'm like, no, Lauren, look, it's okay. You're good at your job. And then, like, I see them, and I'm like, Ugh. Um, thank you for, for being here. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. And I was going to say the same about your bio package at the beginning. I was just like cracking up. So Okay, Adrian, listen, there's no there's no bonus points, okay? There's no points to get you nowhere. Get Adrian out of here. Because, Adrian, we have someone that you know very well we have to introduce. And that is, in case you blinked and missed Adrian, we have his brother, 
Andrew Nuno. Um, it's not a competition. Is one better than the other? I don't know. We're about to find out. This is uh, Andrew's uh, bio video package. Andrew Nuno is a writer, director, producer, and actor from Chicago, Illinois. Andrew creates content that focuses on untapped communities. Over the years, his work has been recognized at film festivals in both the U.S. and abroad in countries like Portugal and Ireland. In addition, his work has screened through partnerships with organizations like National Alliance on Mental Illness and at venues like the Chicago Cultural Center. Andrew's current project, the web series Bordered, is currently streaming on the Emmy and Streamy-nominated web platform, Open Television, where the full season of Bordered is premiering this summer. Half of the Nuno twins duo, Andrew is the one that comes up with the universal stories that touch hearts in any language. And when he comes up with ideas, his brother translates them in post-production. With their experience working for everything from startups and PR agencies to Fortune 500 companies, their goal is to help topics and communities that normally don't get into the spotlight become a part of the conversation. I mean, and, and Andrew, uh, great. I mean, this family must be so annoying to be around because <laughs> losing with talent. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah, of course. Not to echo the sentiment of uh, the other me, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here. And you know, thank you very much. Individuals. I know a lot of twins. <laughs> They're two different people. No, pro I know that. Everyone else, is, I understand. Yeah, um, yeah, all good. No, Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to talk with everyone. We have one more panelist to introduce. Um, did we save the best for last? I I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I don't know. This, again, this is not a competition, but I really am setting this up for everyone to fight. I'm really good at my job. Okay. So this next panelist, um, she, you listen, this bio video package is also going to blow your mind. This is Alexis Garcia. I mean, just we'll just we'll let the visuals speak for themselves. Alexis Garcia is a writer, director, and proud afro boricua hailing from the Bronx, New York. Her work has spanned both TV and digital, and she was the voice of Pero Like, working behind the scenes for the brand as its content strategist before becoming the creator and showrunner of its Webby award-winning series, Mi Quinceañera Come True. Through her previous work at Univision's Flama and current work as supervising producer for Pero Like, Alexis has honed an expertise in Latinx audiences and storytelling across multiple platforms and is passionate about driving critical conversations that inform Form and uplift, and uplift the, Latinx the Latinx community. Oh, boy. Hello. Hello, and I look at this background. Oh, my gosh. You're just, just hitting. Looks so cool. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You're killing it. Oh, my gosh. Killing it. Started on view. My oh, hair is it. 105 degrees here. Is everyone okay? Um, okay, Alexis, I, I have so many questions for everyone. I'm going to bring all of the panelists uh, actually back out. So I'm going to bring out Carla Cabina, Adrian and Andrew Nuno, and Alexis Garcia, who you just saw. Yay, everyone pretend this is a live show. Oh, my God. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, first of all, you're late. What are you do? This is Zoom. Just put us on while you do the dishes. Come on. Uh, we are talking about how to submit a winning entry. So we're talking about films and, and more specifically film festivals. So these uh, guys are the creme de la creme of making sure you win. I'm certainly a loser, so don't, I'm not gonna talk very much, but they are going to provide hot tips. We're gonna talk strategies. I think the thing that I love most about Cine Youth is a lot of times other places are like vague, it's theory. You know, we really wanna get to like tangible takeaways. So let me not waste any more time. Um, Again, the Zoom of it's a little, you know, if you if you got an answer, let's we'll like raise our hand. You go and speak. I'll mm -hmm. call on you. We'll all be prepared. Peace yourself. We're ready to go. But the first question I have for you guys is I think a lot of times with making a film, sometimes you like have it and it's so easy and it comes out. Sometimes it's like I've lost 10 years of my life and I'm never getting it back. Can you guys just share an example of a film that you made that you were like, oh, this needs to be a part of a film festival. Like, what about that specific project where you like, I need to submit it because I think it's a winner? I guess I'll go first. Yeah, uh, it is a <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for me, it was hands down a, a short film that Andrew and I made 
uh, back in 2018 called Little Things because, I mean, with the projects that we do, I mean, the first and foremost goal is, of course, for it to be entertaining and for audiences to enjoy watching the film. But mm -hmm. the second goal is that it provokes some conversation. And so for that project, the topic was mental health, suicide awareness, how to spot what are not the typical warning signs of, of someone possibly wanting to commit suicide. Um, and so for me, that was the film that I just thought, this is the kind of film that will hopefully provoke conversation around mental health. This is the, the kind of film that I want to see go onto a film festival where more pe people can see it. And so for me, it's number one, is it, is it entertaining? But number two, after seeing it, will it get people talking about the film and possibly provoke a conversation on something else mm -hmm. uh, like mental health? And so that's what I would say. I can also go. There you go. <laughs> there you go, cuties. Yes. I think we also, like, when you're developing the film, you know, like, it, it, before you even start that you want what the intention is. Um, and I think that the amount of sacrifice it takes to bring a film to fruition as an independent filmmaker, um, definitely it's like you want to be able to put it through the the festival circuit because mm. that's the only opportunity that's available to you, especially if you're not, you know, already engaged by a studio and stuff like that. So like as an independent filmmaker and you, you know that like, this is going to be a prestige project. Um, this is going to be something like uh, that is speaking of an issue or um, something that you're, you're putting a lot of heart and energy and effort into um, the festival circuit is the way to go um, versus just releasing it on digital. Um, I think if you want to reach as many people as possible, then you would want to put it just on online, um, and that and that's like the difference in, in access. Uh, but I think right. that you know, putting it through a festival has its own, um, you know, glamour to it, and and also opens the doors to other opportunities. But so then, Alexis, if I can just like double down on that, is there yeah. a thing? Um, because obviously, I mean, that's the whole conversation. Is like, whoa, what do I, uh, what do I put? what do I spend time and money and resources in festivals? What was the film for you that you were like, this has to, we have to suffer and do it? Yeah, um, similar to, to Adrian, I created a film about um, the suicide rate in the, mm -hmm. uh, amongst veterans in the military mm -hmm. and we raised money for it to, to be able to shoot it. And we, we got a really like, it wasn't a huge budget at all. <laughs> we raised five thousand dollars, and uh, a lot of people worked for free on that project. Yeah, but everyone that had come together for this particular film was like really um, had cut. Were coming from the film world. It was like all SAG act actors and and a legit DP and and. Um, and we just like knew, okay, this one we're gonna put through the festival circuit and see how it does. Um, and unfortunately, like because we had such a small budget and because I was like very green as a filmmaker, I didn't realize I needed to save money for the festival circuit. So that's like yeah. another thing that we'll talk about <laughs> in this <laughs> Um But yeah, definitely budget for uh, doing, uh -huh. doing uh, festivals. Well, the answer I'm getting is uh, suicide films. Films about suicide. <laughs> okay. The panel's over. Carla, sorry, go ahead. And you're on mute, Carla, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, thanks, uh, Adrian and Alexis, for sharing. Uh, um, when I do a film, I always think about uh, sending it to festivals. It's part of the plan because it's, it's you know, it's like the, the, the market that is for films and it's the way you can make your films uh, uh, reach a, a bigger audience. And also, I had made, I had made three short films and one feature film. Mm -hmm. And I can say uh, the, one of my three short films that, you know, it, it went to all, many, many queer film festivals. And then with my feature film, I went to almost 40 uh, film festivals. I will say that uh, it's in, in pre-production and in, in the development part that you study what kind of festivals you can go, you plan ahead. Sorry for the sound, I, I live in, Avenue, uh, 
um, would be airplanes too. So I'm sorry. So you plan ahead and you see what's the circuit of festivals around the world and in the United States and in Latin America. And you have to know your film. Uh, you have to know what kind of film they're doing, what kind of public uh, will like it. In my, in my, my feature film is a film about family chickens and starts. Is a Western sci-fi family dramedy. I say that's the gender, <laughs> gender film, <laughs> a lesbian film too. Uh, so, so the queer film festival was, you know, the place to go. What I have to say that my plan was another plan. I was thinking about the A festival, but it turns uh, out that for the because of the timing, it, it went to the first queer festi film festival, and then. You know, there, there, there's a word of mouth that comes from some festivals and it just they start calling me to, to, to have the film. So it was mm -hmm. a very smooth, uh, you know, uh, process. Well, yeah. It's also interesting, Carla, anything you say with those glasses on, I'm like, yeah, I know, 100%. <laughs> I didn't get the memo to dress up so cool. I just was told to show up. Um, no, they, yeah, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just one thing I want to add for for um, about this question. Uh, so for for me, the projects that that Avery and I did that I just like really resonated with was our web series Bordered, uh, and I feel like the, the reason why I resonated with that project so much is because especially for that project. I feel that Adrian and I and our other co-creator uh, Lauren Lugo, we were mm -hmm. we all were kind of speaking our truth through that that web series. That was definitely the most vulnerable thing that we had ever made because yeah. we were touching on a lot of matters that were really near and dear to us. You know, sexuality, anxiety, having mental illness, especially in the Latinx community where I feel like we don't necessarily talk too much about mental health the way the way that we should. And I feel that you know trying to speak our truth through creating that content it inspired us to really try to get it out there because I think at the end of the day you know all of us as content creators we're trying to speak some sort of truth with the content that we create that's what we want to get out there into the world and so I think that so long as you're creating something that speaks la verdad and, and really you know speaks to who you are and what you're trying to get across I don't think that there's a, a film festival that's like an impossibility for you yeah no, I really appreciate everyone's answers. We really have sort of this broad spectrum of, I wish we had another hour just to talk about financing because people do forget to budget for festivals because they can mm -hmm. uh, be expensive. And I actually, I do want to hit on like speaking your truth. And also Carla mentioned something that happens with my own films. Like if you hit a niche, for example, queer film festivals, there's a lot of word, a lot of word of mouth. Okay, the lesbians love to talk. And so you don't actually always have to pay to get into certain film festivals if you have a film that's doing really well. And so my next question is, where do you guys submit? Because I do think there is a good strategy that you can utilize to not always spend so much money, but also be strategic. You know, like, do you guys have any festival that you're like, we have to hit this, we have to make sure we budget this, and then like more trying to develop connections and network around other festivals? Yeah, I, I can kind of start start off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, it, you know, when Adrian and I are kind of like trying to figure out like what's the festival route for a particular project, I think first and foremost, you know, we try to look at you know what's the audience that we want to reach, you know, because I think every single project that we've made has had a little bit of a, a different a different audience, and so we try to figure out you know well, what are film festivals that that you know really try to play to to the theme of, of our film the topic of our film where mm -hmm. something that could you know really resonate with what we're trying to make here but i think to also to that point you know i think something that a lot of filmmakers don't think about too often is well what kind of opportunities does said film festival offer you that you might be interested in you know are there panels playing at that festival that you really want to attend are there networking events that you really want to take advantage of or is there like a film that's just going to be screening there that like you need to see um and so i think it's always going to be a little different for every single project no films festival route is ever the same as the other one so it's really trying to figure out not only you know what do you want how do you want your film to perform but like how, what are you trying to get out of the festival experience this time around? Mm, totally. Yeah, that's very smart. Think about your audience, kids. <laughs> um, 
Alexis, you, I feel, oh no, Carla, 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 go ahead. Get in. I would say that the, for, for a queer film, first, for a queer film, it is like thinking about, you know, the big ones like uh, Frameline or out uh, the one in, in California or the one in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Those festivals will, you know, will open your, the doors to other festivals. And, and in my case, I went to a festival in Puerto Rico, but because all those festivals communicate, that you know just went all, all the way. But if you have another kind of film, like I would say, it depends. You can go if you have an art uh, European kind of uh, film, you can go try to go to Cannes, and that's you have to be see the the, the dates. In the United States, you have Sundance and Tribeca. They are very good, you know, show up uh, festivals, and 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 then and then. Accept whatever it comes, like good too. Because if you try to go Cannes and go to Quebec and you don't go in, and there's a little festival, Latin film festival in I don't know Milwaukee, it will open doors too. So you can you have to, you know, trust the path. Try to to you know look at the the, the bigger ones, but then trust the path. In my in my film, I did something. I wanted to go to Guadalajara, Mexico, because it's a very good festival for the Latin uh, Latin American. Uh, circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get in, but I went to the market. Uh, they have a marketplace where you can sell films uh, to, distribu to distributors, and we sell the film to to, to, to a TV, uh, uh, a Latin TV in US. So I think it's, it's you know it's 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 like business. Uh, festivals is like it's business. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I just want to add too that uh, just touching on what Carla said is like. There are so many festivals under the sun. There's literally a festival for everything. Like you made yeah. it happy. There's there's a cat <laughs> festival. Like just up, like that festival wants your movie. Um, so I would say, especially to first time filmmakers, I know we're all like really hopeful that like we'll get into Sundance or South by or Quebec or one of these really big festivals. Um, but oftentimes those are the those are the festivals that everyone's applying to. They get thousands and thousands of submissions. So the competition is really stiff and that's not to say that your film isn't good enough, um, but the chances of you getting through are a lot slimmer. So I would encourage everyone to look at these smaller film festivals because um, they help you to meet other filmmakers and they also increase your network, which um, especially as an independent filmmaker, like your network is, is your net worth. So like having, knowing people you went to this film festival your film wasn't even in it but now you know that person who's on the programming team for that festival and next time you have a film you can send it to them because you got their email address and you're going to stay in touch with them <laughs> so it's like yeah just be know that this is a business like everyone is saying here it's like and you have to hustle um you might have the most amazing film under the sun and it gets rejected and keeps getting rejected at, at festivals, but that's not a reflection on you as an artist. It might just be a reflection on, on how big your network is. And, um, and that just means that you unfortunately have to hustle in that direction because, mm -hmm. you know, networking can seem really intimidating and, and not the most, um, not the thing you want to do because you're an artist and you just want to make your art, but at the same time, it's like such an imperative part of this business. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a little tip I'll throw in there since uh, Alexis just talked about networking is often when I'm researching a, a film festival, uh, one of the many positive benefits of social media is that now so many of these festivals have Instagram pages for their festival. And so what I like to do is I go to the festival, go to see how, how many accounts tag the festival uh, on their own accounts because often these are from people who have been to the festival in the past. And so I will message them and strike up a conversation about like, hey, I saw that you went to the festival last year. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the festival was like for you? Were there any panels? How were the screenings? Just tell me a little bit about how it was for you. And so from that conversation, not only do you have a new connection from that, but you also get a much better sense from somebody who was actually there themselves of how the festival was like. And so you get a connection, and a good sense of how the experience would be for you if you were to go to that festival yourself. So just wanted to share that little little tip right there. No, the, this is all great. So to in summation, submit everywhere if you got the money, but be smart. I think I literally word of mouth is huge. 
I think I've done where I've gone to festivals and I've had coffees with like 20 people after the fact. You just gotta, the hustle is real. It's a business. We all are artists. Um, and Alexis is submitting to Cat Film Festival. So maybe we should stop listening to Alexis. Uh, <laughs> no, but guys, this is so, so helpful. I mean, yeah, we're all just freaks of nature just trying to do the thing. Okay. So you guys, what I love specifically about this group is that you guys actually win things and uh, have great content to back it up. Is there any recommendations for the people listening? And I listen, if you are not listening, th th they are dropping gems. It took me like eight years to learn that they're casually just dropping. So listen up. Are there any specific tips you have for making a project uh, stand out? For example, I've heard that like a lot of people don't put a director's, uh, a director's statement. And a lot of times that can help, uh, you know, flesh out a project, for example. So do you guys have any tips like that to make your project stand out or just to make sure that it's complete, you know, any do's or don'ts uh, for submitting to festivals? Yeah, yeah. One big tip I would say is if you can submit early, uh, because often with festivals, there is an early deadline, a regular deadline, and then a late deadline. And so not only would submitting early allow you to, to not pay as much of a submission fee as you would if you would pay for the regular deadline or the late deadline, but also you get to throw your hat in the ring a little bit sooner ahead of all the other submissions that will come in. So that likely increases the possibility that you will be selected because right when they open the submissions, you already throw your hand to the ring, you already throw yourself out there for consideration, and therefore you'll likely possibly be uh, considered to be selected to screen your project. And so definitely if you can submit early, submit early. Otherwise, if you push it off, you might forget to submit overall in the end and you miss the deadline and now you're not in a good spot. So if you can, submit early. Yeah, one one thing I'll, I will do to kind of like piggyback on on Adrian's comment there is also just to consider. Often, I don't know. Yeah. What was it? Do you guys work together often? I, I can't picture it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, shocking, right? <laughs> but well, one thing I we're just tuning in are like, I think my computer is lagging. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Sometimes, like. I'll have something that I want to say, and then before I can say it, he'll say it for me, like word for word, like exactly how I was gonna say it. I'm just like, it's kind of weird. Not exactly sure why that happened, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, one thing I will say on top of Adrian's comment is also like I feel like a lot of people don't really consider like younger festivals because it doesn't have like that clout per se that like a lot more established festivals do. But I think especially if you know the festival that you're considering you know, is something that would kind of fit what your film's about and the audience that it wants to serve, like definitely consider those younger festivals too, because not only, you know, are there not necessarily as much competition necessarily as the bigger festivals, but I also find that with younger festivals, you actually get to build really neat relationships with the folks who head up those festivals. And, you know, there are festivals that we have been to that were a little bit more in the younger phase where like we still talk to the executive director of that festival to this day, because, you know, you're giving their festival a chance and they're giving you a chance in return. So it forms this really nice relationship where y'all are just kind of cheering each other on and really following each other's careers. So I think that there's a lot of benefits to submitting to younger festivals, especially if you feel that your film may be something that their audience would like. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, they, they have saved that. Uh, I, 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 but I will add, to look at local festivals where you live, what kind of festivals there, there, there are that they are like good to and, and help you build an audience uh, near you. And then it's relationships. So when you submit a film to a festival and you have a new film, continue to build that relationship and send the film again, because usually it's the same people and they remember you. And then, you know, uh, build relationships, talk to people, and if you know the programmer, write to them, and continue the relationship. Hmm. But okay, not to like put more pressure on you, just I just want to like noodle in there a little more. Like what, when you're submitting, okay, you got these glasses on, I know you're like a baller, o sea, like un crack, como lo dicen en España. Like, you know you have to put your special sauce on something, right? Like. What, what do you think about when you're submitting? It's not like this film is, because it's a full package or not. 
Well, you know, festivals, so meeting festival is, is something that you just write, they, they ask the questions. You just have to have your a good synopsis, a good log line, mm -hmm. but that, you know, with my Fisher field, you're finding money, you need a good synopsis and a good log line. So, mm -hmm. uh, trying to find money to make a film prepares you to pitch your film to the, to, to the end, because when you're finding money, they ask a lot of questions of what you're going to do once you have your film finished. And, 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 and you have to think about that. So I think this your synopsis is very important. In, in, in a picture film, your trailer is very important. Um, but it's like Alexis said before, sometimes it's not about your film and if it's good or not. It's about uh, who comes first, relationships. These people, they know many of them. And the bigger the festival, the more difficult to get in, not because of your film or your work, but because they have people they like and they're, they're films they want to put there. So you have to build, it's building a career. You to, to build the relationship to, to time. Go to, I, I, I went to all the, the panels I could, I went to all the, you know, Experience where you can learn and talk to people and talk about your film and whenever you have a you have to have your pitch I think that's very important if you have a pitch of your film that you can you know an elevator pitch that you can grab the attention of someone and and it's really it's really very I don't know it's it's kind of a sarroso um, a sar uh, a in español I don't know how to say that in Spanish. Like uh, there's a lot of uh, I don't know the film has this this way, but uh -huh. the extraterrestrials I have to say that it, she, she has this life. I wanted to take her this way, and she went. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Cool. And I have I have been rejected uh, uh, from a lot of festivals that I wanted to go in, but then there was oh this festival that just was, you know writing to me to have the film. It went to South Africa to a. A woman film festival, and that for me was very, very, very beautiful. Yeah. Very cool. And it was a small festival, a drum yeah. festival, but I don't know. I think it's, 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 it's what you say, it, it enriches the festivals and enriches your experience. Too. Mm -hmm. And Carla, wherever you go is a good time, so it doesn't matter. If you're there, it's a party. Yeah. All right, <laughs> yeah. I was just going to add that um, as a, a, like, creating a film is kind of a marathon in that once the film is finished, that's not the end. Like you want it to have a life beyond the completion of the film. And so really putting your efforts into writing a good synopsis and you know, doing the extra effort to write a director's statement, I think all of that is really um, valuable. And, and, and I would say like, if you want to, um, give your film the life that it deserves, then you will make the effort to to do your research on the festival, save the budget for the festival circuit and and apply. I think those are, and to, to, to drive home Carla's point too about like the network and attending festivals, even if your film isn't in that festival, go because you love that festival and you just wanna like see what that festival is about and you meet people um, and don't think of it so much as like, oh, I have to do this. Think of this as like, you love filmmaking and you get the opportunity to do this and it's super fun. And you'll learn to love like being around that energy, around the information, around the access, because it does inspire you. Even if your film isn't in the festival, you're like inspired by the stories you're seeing and inspired by the people around you because it is a community and um, you need that community in order to, um, survive and to have a career like like Gala's career is such a cool like it's so cool to see an independent filmmaker um making her first feature and, and sharing it showing it at festivals like that's where we want to all be and get and and so it's like major props to you Carla because I know how hard it is <laughs> and it's like it took me eight years you can do it <laughs> it took you eight years eight years eight years Yes, All right. the money because Puerto Rico doesn't have a big, you know, film industry and not a lot of money. So it was very, very hard. So when you get to that point, you you you, you have a build not only a film but you know like like the, the business that you can move it because it's a lot of money. Totally. 
It's harder if you're like, I, if you don't have talent, it's going to take even longer. So guys, buckle up. Some of us are <laughs> making it until we're 85. Um, so just in some, I feel like we got a lot of good tips, right? So director statement, apply early. I think the key, key, key is that it is a marathon and you need connections. You got to start somewhere. I don't think, I agree with everyone, like submit everywhere. There's so many free festivals and doing it the first time you get better each time. I mean, if you're not embarrassed about films you started making, like you should be embarrassed about everything you've made earlier, but you should be like continuing to move forward is how I like to say it. Um, I also want to remind everyone, if you are just tuning in, where in the heck have you been? Uh, but you're here. This is Conversations Among X. We are with CineYouthFest.org. If you want some more information, you can go to CineYouthFest.org. Uh, and uh, there is a competition there. Uh, you have until August 30th to submit. So go ahead and submit. Okay, you guys, we've talked about a lot of do's, things to do, tangible places to submit to, like a women's festival in South Africa. Everyone should be submitting to that one. Um, <laughs> what are some don'ts that you guys would recommend like what are some things like and this question is a do's and don'ts i like what are some red flags that maybe you've done or you've seen that you feel like and you know uh alexis i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this to you to get the ball rolling because you don't seem like someone that makes a lot of mistakes and so just like seeing your like yeah so well, I'm gonna, yeah. no you don't you seem very <laughs> like um boys and you seem so i'm actually really curious to hear from you first because I do wonder if there are some don'ts that you're like, don't do that. Like, I want, I just want to hear your perspective on it. Yeah, I know. And I think that the advice that I'm going to give will maybe be disheartening to some people. But <laughs> if this is your first film and your first film, like, you're just applying at all the festivals, don't even bother applying to Sundance. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, because it is, it's like everybody wants to apply there. And yes, if you get in, it's, really amazing um but i would encourage everyone to look at their programs because they do have some great like filmmaker development programs and they also have you know other auxiliary auxiliary um things that you can submit your film to but like save your money on some of these festivals mm -hmm. just be like you know <laughs> totally. um, and also if you if you want you can still apply but that's just my advice it's just really hard and um, there's lots of festivals that are like that, but your money is better spent on smaller film festivals and festivals that, uh, you know, actually fit into like the genre of your film or would be a really good home for it. And that going back to the, your cat movie, right? It's like, <laughs> find a cat festival. it's out there and it really needs your film. <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> I also thought the advice you were going to give was, just don't. <laughs> just stop it. There. It's real. I actually am twenty. I look fifty-five. You know, like. <laughs> no, that's very. That's very. Uh, that's very spot on. Yeah, I think one one other piece of advice I'll throw in there, and like in hindsight, it was pretty obvious, but to like seventeen-year-old me, it wasn't quite so obvious. Like. Look into the festivals that you're submitting to before you submit to them because there have been a few festivals that we've gotten into. We've gone and it's just like not at all what we thought it was going to be. Um, so like in hindsight, it's just like, you know, probably should have looked in, into that a little bit more to see like, you know, even if I got in, like is the, is the experience going to be the thing that I, I, I really want it to be. Uh, so like definitely do your homework and and, you know, really make sure that you know, if you're going to pay that 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 fee to submit your film, if you're going to make the effort to go out to said festival, it, it's going to be worth your time, and you're really going to get as much as you want out of that experience. Yeah, yeah, and uh, one other thing that that I want to add is, you know, if you do go to a film festival in person. I wish that I wasn't so shy about going up to people at first and talking with, with them and networking with them because ultimately, especially if you make the trek to go to a film festival in person, one of the great benefits of a film festival is you get to network with other people and meet other people and just talk about content, talk about films, talk about documentaries, what whatever the case may be. And so when I first went to film festivals, I was so shy because I was just like, 
oh, you know, I, I'm just so scared of what I'm even going to say, what would I even talk about with these people? But now the more I've, I've gone to festivals, the more comfortable I am with, with going up to people and networking with others. And so it's definitely a muscle that you have to work as time progresses uh, on, especially at first. But uh, definitely if you get the chance to go to a festival, go talk to someone, network with people, get to know others, because that is one of the many other benefits uh, of film festivals and getting to go in person that on top of screening your work, go and meet other people and talk with them. Yeah, and like nine times out of 10, everyone's just as nervous as you are. Like everyone's looking for someone to talk to, a friend to make, to conversate with. So like everybody's like in the exact same boat as you. You're not alone. You guys sound like um, Jewish mothers. Go and talk, go find someone. You go and talk to like. <laughs> uh, you guys, what about you? Any don't any red flags? Any mistakes you've made in your life? Well, I have done a lot of mistakes, but okay. I don't know. In festivals, I say um, the China is is something to think about. It's it's difficult because sometimes you are there. There's a lot of people, and you. Mm -hmm. You don't talk the, the language, it's, it's kind of a... But you have to try it, no? And, and look for the activities they make. Like, they make mixed activities, uh, parties or, you know, cocktails, and this this merging activities that you should go and, and put it easy to, to connect with people. Other thing I would say is that it's, it's difficult is to be rejected. Uh, whenever you, you receive a rejection that, you know, you feel like, you lose a little bit of light, and you have to know is you cannot give that too much importance. You have to keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, because it costs money, I recommend to study the festivals to see uh, what festivals are the more convenient for your film. And I usually submit to three festivals Spain, and that's that's the budget. Is the film does it grow in any of them? I just stay with the, the ones that are you know free. Um, and if, if not, I just continue to do another another film because if you and there's a platform, I, I don't remember the name, but with my first short film, I you know, I just pay and send it to all the festivals that they, they send it to me. And it was you know just a throw of money. Everybody was sending films there. Mm. And you're not you know, the, the chances of getting in they're very, very low. So I don't use platforms. Uh, the only platform I, I, I have been used is with the, the European one because that is more that it has better. And I usually use the platform for small festivals, not the big ones, because in the big ones, you will not, you know, the, you go through the, 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 the festival, but for the big ones, you usually need to, you know, have some connections. Yeah. So, and another thing I think is very good, uh, some festival has workshops like Sundance or also Cannes or Ventana Sousa. So you can go to the sports workshops so you can start building a relationship. Uh, because, you know, those activities help you connect and create, you know, the, the relationship you will need when you think when it's ready. It's difficult to enter the workshops too. So you have to have a very healthy ego to do film, I would say. Yeah, Cer certainly Steven Spielberg would agree. Um, no, but I, I think to that end, actually, two points that you, you guys all raised. One, uh, to what Carla just said, yeah, not we all think all of our films are beautiful, they're special, they're personal, and you know they all are great in their own right, but some are stronger than others, and I think the free element is really crucial. Like, there you have peers that you trust there are people that you trust and if you don't tr have people you trust go and find them that's actually the the most affordable option is friendship and people that you want to work with and you do work with you don't have to pay fifty dollars a hundred dollars to submit to a festival you can workshop it around see if it, people are responding positively and if they are it's like maybe i have something here to submit to a festival of course what is your budget are you networking are you doing all the smart things but i've had I've had duds where my friends are like, not this one, buddy. And I'm like, you're right. I'll say that's, you know, I'll save that for later. And the second element that I think we've all brought up here is the social element, which is trying to not be shy. I obviously can talk to a shoelace. I have no problem. But my friends that are writers or directors, you know, or aren't performers, you know, so, some of us, we need, uh, you know, to meditate prior. We need to 
talk to our therapist, talk to our siblings, our family. You know, sometimes people get a little too drunk at these things. I wouldn't recommend that. Set yourself up for success. That's the greatest thing and the greatest tip I can offer you. Whatever you need to feel like you are, you know, not you are ready to talk to some people, you do that because you don't want to be the really drunk uncle. I'm not talking from experience. You just don't want to be that uh, that person. Um, okay, we have a little bit of time left, and I'm actually this is my own question. I want to ask you guys. So I feel like everyone here, we uh, we are all in the world of like marginalization to some extent, right? Our own work is entering, you know, the, the subcategories of the mainstream, whether it's with uh, sexuality, that can be that, race. And so for you guys, do you find that that is uh, helpful when submitting to festivals? Do you feel like being more personal with your work is more is helpful? Or do you find that there are limitations and people are like, I don't want to see an Afro-Latina. Like, you know, I have, yeah, like that feels like edgy or scary. Or do you feel like it's that's actually what's helping you Stand out because you're doing challenging work. You're doing work that hasn't been seen. Yet. Yeah, I think, like speaking from my personal experience, the work that I've done that like comes from my heart and my soul is always the best work. And um, and I and my in speaking from my experience, you know, it's like I am an Afro Latina moving through the world, so that's like. Like and the the perspectives that I can lend, um, and and even I don't even I don't have to tell stories about Afro Latinidad per se, but um, it's like there's only there's only one you in the world, and so mm -hmm. I would say that your voice is really valuable and your perspective is really valuable, and um, especially as as artists, like that that's the gift that we've been given um, is our voice. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To go off of your point, Alexis, there's, there's a quote by Martin Scorsese that I love the so, The most so marginalized much. person of all, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, there's, there's like, a, and I remember Bu Zhang Ho, uh, when he won the Oscar for, for Parasite, he, he recited this this quote, and I love it, and, and it's uh, the most personal is the most creative. It's, you know, when we're really not afraid to really, you know, take our fears, take our, you know, uh, the things that we're scared of, the, the things that we're proud of, the things that, that make us sad, and, and really try to, to bring that out in, in, into the world. Um, because I think that, you know, when we, when we lose the fear of, of embracing the parts of us that make us different, a really beautiful thing can happen. And, and we empower ourselves instead to, to create work that, you know, even if it's not necessarily like autobiographical, but, but it's, it still allows us to tell any story from the lens that we can bring to it. Um, and, and I'm really, really excited that, you know, there's a time happening right now where, you know, our stories are, are starting to be told. We're not being, you know, immediately shut down anymore uh, because we don't fit the mold that, that Hollywood has embraced for decades upon decades. And so I feel, you know, whereas in the past, the things that made us different would have been a negative. Now it's starting to th be the thing that empowers us as content creators to go out there and, and to speak our truth. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, great. Yeah, not everyone has to respond to each question. You know, some of them, some of them enough said. Um, <laughs> so guys, we're, we're nearing the end of, of this panel and I really just want to give you guys a moment to just any final statements you want to give to emerging filmmakers, but specifically, again, if, if any final last words in terms of film festivals, we really covered a lot. Honestly, if you want to talk about whatever you want to talk about, I'm not in charge. Okay. Who's going to stop you? Not me. Um, but just like any final, any final statements you have for the people watching. I, I would just say that there has never been a more exciting time to create content because mm -hmm. the editing software that you need is there's even free so editing software that you can now have at, at your use. You literally have a, a camera on your phone. Like there has never been a better opportunity to create content than right here, right now. And so, you know, like the message that's already been echoed throughout the course of this panel, just submit because you already know what's going to happen if you don't. So see what might happen if you do and just get out there, take advantage of all the materials you have to create content and get out there and submit. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I will add uh, that 
yeah, you have to connect with your heart. And also film filmmaking is living. You know, what, what you have to do is to live to, to live life, to, to engage, to know people, to go to adventures, to read, to study, to investigate, yeah. So you have a voice that is a powerful, that is a voice that has content, not just saying whatever comes to your mind, but having a voice that can, can stand and, and can, you know, uh, touch other, other hearts, other people's hearts. And I will invite the Boricuas to submit to these festivals and to continue to uh, tell them their stories uh, as a Puerto Rican. Uh, I feel like filmmaking for me is trying to put ourselves in the world because uh, we don't we don't see each other in in, in, in in the films. We don't we don't see Puerto Ricans only in music, but we don't see ourselves. And we are very diverse, and we have diverse voices we have to, to bring to the front. So, so I think film is a powerful uh, tool to make yourself and make your ident identity and your culture, culture uh, being seen. And now, if you don't go to a festival, you have YouTube, you have Vimeo, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, so you can put your film yourself out there. And, and maybe there's other people that will like you and, and, uh, and what you have to say. Just move, you know, you don't, you don't stay, just believe and move. But I will say also, study you know what you're telling about if you're you're uh, telling a story about something investigate uh, and interview people don't pretend that you know everything uh, because uh, people you know uh, the audience is very intelligent and you cannot fool them so mm -hmm. I think I will advise that to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I love that Carla everything you said is so amazing and on point everyone everything everyone said on this panel i've like learned so much and uh, it's been a really really great conversation mm -hmm. and um and also I, I just want to advise all the youth out there like apply to cuentas you know this is they're putting on this panel and it's like you know this is another in another avenue to um getting your work out there um and know that the road is not short it's very long and that's all right because if this is what you really want to do um yes there's going to be a peaks and there's going to be valleys um but don't give up i think that's something that uh is very generic but at the same time it's so true to this path because it's very difficult um but any path is difficult you could say tomorrow oh you know what i didn't get into that film festival i'm just going to go become a a, a dentist <laughs> and that, you know, we that's need more dentists. We need like, if that's your calling. Yeah. If that's your calling, we need yeah. a dentist because the world needs dentists. But if you feel your calling is a filmmaker, then stick to the path because not everyone pops off when they're 25 and wins an Oscar and, and that kind of thing. That's that's like 1% of, of, of filmmakers' um, paths is that. And they're usually white men with connections. So. Put your blinders on and say this is my road and i'm committed to this and these i i am committed to tell the stories that are in my heart um mm -hmm. and and believe that um that you will that, that doors will open up for you because they do it's like you know and that's the stuff that that just is like the signs that okay look something's happening for me this is awesome and it just encourages you to keep going forward and i think especially as young filmmakers these smaller festivals are where you should be investing because you're creating a network of other peers who are who will become your community as filmmakers and will help you when you're having a low and vice versa. And um, there will be people who will come up with you. I think um, Issa Rae says this. Uh, she's, very, she's like known for having said this. It's like networking across is just as important. I mean, if not more important than networking up. So yeah. it's not as important that you meet that festival director, but maybe you're going to meet an intern or a volunteer who then next year starts to assist. And then the next year that person gets promoted. And then in five years, they're like yeah. leading the programming or something like that. So it's like invest in those relationships because there might be someone standing in the core of the party that's just as shy as you and you can go and, and say hi to them. And then there that became, became the spark to, you know, a, yeah. a 10 year friendship, you know, and, and 
and you help each other. So that's yeah. just my <laughs> final word of advice. Yeah, yeah, completely no good information in there. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, uh, take us home. We got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. You know, just kind of go off uh, off of your point, Alexis. Uh, you know, the first person who has to take you seriously as a filmmaker is yourself. You know, yeah. you have to believe because like there wasn't ever anyone that told me, oh, you're a producer now or you're direct. you have to believe that you are worth the time, that you are worth people's money, that you're worth the effort to create. And if you truly believe that this is something that you're meant to do, that this is what you want to do, like that is going to trickle into so many opportunities. But the first thing that's got to happen is you have to believe in yourself and believe that you have something to share with the world that's worth sharing. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much. This was so nice. I mean, I kind of feel like I've just called a bunch of friends and I like forced you into a Zoom with me. <laughs> Only two people are watching and it's us. Um, thank you to everyone again. Please, it's you know, we all have social media. Follow all these geniuses. They're super smart everything they're saying. To recap really quick, we're network and talk to people, study, you know, or get like a nice wife or husband that's got that is an oil tycoon, and then you don't need to do any of this. Don't listen to any of this. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. This was uh, Cine Youth, okay? This is two fun times. Submit to the festival you have until August 30th. We were talking to Carla, we were talking to Alexis, we were talking to the Nuno twins, uh, who are also independent people, but I just don't believe it. I'm Lorena. I, I had such a good time, and honestly, I have to thank you, the audience, for watching. This would be so much weirder without you there. You're there, you guys are there, right? Again, if you like this panel, we have more coming up, and you can go to CineYouthFest.org for any of our future uh, panels. The next one's Wednesday, July 21st, Evoking Emotion. Emotion, what's that? Exploring the use of images and sound. It's moderated by my uh, <laughs> alternate universe twin, just like Carla, Jesse Fuentes. Um, again, I've been Lorena, and the last group of people I want to thank are our sponsors. Really, without them, this would not, this would not happen. Um, so... If this is the last I'm seeing you guys, happy, happy Wednesday. Ciao, ciao, ciao. And thank you so much for watching Conversations Among X. I'll see you later. Thanks to our sponsors, we continue to have important conversations that educate and inspire the most valuable asset for a brighter future. The new generation of Latinx creatives. Visit CineYouthFest.org to find out more. Because tu cuentas. We all have a story to tell, and your story matters. Now more than ever, that's why we've created Cine Youth Fest, a cinema festival and a platform for independent voices, positive change, stories of heroism from the lens of a Latinx experience. Join the adventure on our website, cineyouthfest.org. There, you will find all you need to participate in the competition. The rules of the game, Latinx and film, where you find out how important we really are. Classes behind the camera with people who know. Stories from others like you who have a dream, big ideas, and awesome goals. Raise your voice to be heard. Show off to be seen. And be part of history sharing your story. Lights, camera, acción. Because tú cuentas. Powered by H-E-T-N. <laughs>